This short video will describe how to take an impression using Paltop Impression Copings. The impression coping simplifies taking an implant impression. The impression coping transfers the implant position to a model. The impression coping fits precisely into the implant connection and will replicate in a model the implant location, angle, depth, and connection orientation. The hex on the apical end of the impression coping fits precisely into the implant and transfers its position. There are two types of impression copings, closed tray impression copings and open tray impression copings. The closed tray impression coping stays in the patient's mouth during impression tray removal. Therefore, a stock tray may be utilized. And once the impression material has set, the impression tray may be simply lifted off the impression coping. The open tray impression coping is locked into the impression material, so it is removed with the impression tray. There are projections on the open tray impression coping that lock it into the impression material. There is a screw that projects through the stock tray and therefore a window must be cut in the tray to allow this screw to project out. Once the impression material is set, the screw is undone and the impression tray may be lifted out of the patient's mouth. The closed tray impression coping is simple to use. You use a conventional impression tray. It is not suitable for very divergent implants and must be properly reinserted into the impression by the laboratory. The open tray impression coping is locked into the impression. The impression tray must be modified. It may be difficult to use in the posterior due to its excessive height, but it can be used even with divergent implants and it remains in the impression so no reinsertion by the laboratory is required. Is one type of impression coping more accurate than the other? There are many studies. Some of the studies suggest that the open tray impression coping is more accurate. However, many of the studies say both the closed tray and the open tray impression copings are equally as effective. Common wisdom says that the closed tray impression coping is easier to use, while if there are three or more implants, the open tray might be more accurate. When you're ready to take the impression, remove the healing abutment or any provisional abutments, and then the open tray impression coping may be seated, or the closed tray impression coping may be seated. After seating, a verification x-ray, which must be parallel to the implant and impression coping, should be taken. You want to see a smooth transition between the implant and the impression coping. If there is any black space between the impression coping and the implant, then the impression coping is not seated properly. The retaining screw should be loosened, the impression coping rotated until the impression coping drops into place, and then a new verification x-ray taken and the smooth transition should be verified for proper seating. The holes in the top of the retaining screw of the open tray impression coping or the hole of the closed tray impression coping should be blocked out with wax or temporary material. Either a polyvinyl siloxane or polyether impression material should be utilized for the impression. Impression material should be first injected around the impression copings and then the impression tray seated. If an open tray impression coping was used, be sure that the retaining screw projects through the stock tray. If a large window was cut to accommodate this, it should first be blocked out with wax or sterilization tape to prevent excessive extrusion of impression material. Once the impression material has set, the blockout material should be removed, the screw undone from the open tray impression coping, and the impression tray may be lifted out of the patient's mouth. If a closed tray impression coping was utilized, once the impression tray is removed, 
then the retaining screw might be undone and the impression coping removed from the patient's mouth. An implant analog should be sent to the laboratory along with the impression and the impression coping. The laboratory will attach the two and properly seat the closed tray impression coping into the impression matching the flat side of the coping to the impression material. For the open tray, the implant analog is simply seated onto the implant analog. The same implant analog is used for both the closed tray and open tray impression coping. The laboratory will then pour soft tissue material around the implant analog and pour a stone cast. Once the material is set, the laboratory will remove the impression tray and they will have a model that they can select abutments and fabricate restorations. Be sure to send the laboratory a counter model as well as a bite registration. All of the components and parts and impression copings can be found at keystonedental.com or altopdental.com as well as the catalogs or ask your local representatives for assistance. Thank you.